Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for coming to our seventh annual Veterans Day Remembrance Roll Call. My name is Ryan Gonzalez. I'm the Assistant Director for uh, Student Veteran Services, and we will begin our um, our ceremony with the presenting of the colors by the Como High School Navy JRO. JRO. Gary. Go. We stand for the pledge of Ready? Good. Present. Colors. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Gary, colors. Ready, cut, order. Colors. Ready, cut. Four arms. Right, face. Forward, march. It's uh, such an honor, actually it's very humbling, uh, to be here today and to be a part of, of this celebration of, of the sacrifices that have, have given us the life that, that we love, uh, seeing the color board uh, of young people who understand dedication to country uh, is, is warming uh, to the heart. Um, you know, our university appreciates the contributions that members of the military have made to protect the United States and the freedoms that we enjoy. UL Lafayette has been designated, in fact, a military-friendly school two consecutive years, 2015 and 2016, for its dedication to helping veterans achieve their academic objectives. And in fact, the university's appreciation of the U.S. military goes back much further. And some of you may have heard this this story before, but it's always worth hearing again. You know, during World War II, so many students and faculty members here at the university had enlisted in the service that it looked like the school would actually have to shut down due to low enrollments. And at that time, Dr. Joel Fletcher, the president, and the dean of men, Joe Ryle, traveled to Washington, D.C. and convinced leaders in D.C to locate Navy and Marine V-5, V-7, and V-12 military officer training programs here on the campus. And because those were available here on the campus, we had military personnel coming from all around the country to enter this ROTC program here on this campus. And, and really, that's what kept this school open at that time. But on top of that, if you're a sports fan, you might also understand that because all these military personnel came in, we had one of the most extraordinary football programs in the entire country at that time. And in fact, we're ranked number 13 in the nation. And if we, uh, you know, we don't want wars to extend, but if the World War II had gone on a little while, we'd have won a national championship. <laughs> we won the first all goal in uh, 1944, and that was a great thing. But you know, today the Division of Enrollment Management has an Office of Veteran Services that focuses on providing assistance to veterans, active duty members of the military, reservists, members of the National Guard, and dependents of military personnel. And think of the Office of Veteran Services as a hub for assistance for those who have dedicated their lives to providing the freedoms that we have. 
We can point military personnel to veterans benefits and services that are available on campus and beyond, and our director, Sammy Connor, is also the sponsor of the Students Veterans Association, which composed of men and women who have a lot in common, their experiences in the military, as well as their shared academic goals here on campus. In addition, the Office of Undergraduate Admissions and Recruitment has a dedicated person who assists veterans and current military students with the admissions and enrollment process on campus. Our student support services is home to our Veterans Upward Bound program, and this program is intended to help our veterans obtain the skills to meet the basic college requirements as they pursue their, their dreams of higher education. Its purpose is to stand by our veterans along every step in their academic mission. Upward Bound encourages students to pursue academic goals and helps them to brush up on their academic skills as they return uh, to our campus. It provides counseling, mentoring, tutoring, and academic instruction in core subject areas. And if you know any military personnel out there who are interested in attendi attending the university and coming back, I encourage you to contact the Office of Veterans Services so that we can reach out to those people who have done so much for us. It's staff, in the, all of the staff in all of these offices can assist veterans at any level and has a lot of uh, resources to offer to all of these wonderful men and women. But most of all, today, I want to convey to you that the University of Louisiana Lafayette understands the special needs of our veterans and we're ready to help in any way we can. Thanks for inviting me to visit with you today. Thanks for all that you have done for our country. Our next guest speaker will be Mr. Clifton Roy, Jr. Clifton was born December 31st, 1975 and raised in Lafayette, Louisiana. He is the eldest of five siblings. Cliff served in the active duty Army from 1993 to 2002. While on active duty, Cliff served the Army Corps of Engineers in the 91st Engineer Battalion, 2nd Brigade, 1st Cav Division. While with the 91st Engineers, he was part of several deployments and missions to include a tour in Bosnia. He also served the 4th Engineering Battalion, 4th Infantry Division of Fort Carson, Colorado. It was here that Cliff would discover that he had a rare condition that would lead to his medical discharge. Not only was he medically discharged, but he also endured other personal life challenges and changes. Forced to return home to Lafayette alone and empty, he had to start over again. Starting over wasn't easy, however, as he fought and continues to fight to reclaim his destiny. Currently, he is married with kids and resides in Lafayette. Now he operates as an employee of Lafayette General Medical Center, working in the Behavioral Health Unit. Not only does he help those who are in crisis, he also operates a small community-based church called Restored Connection Church. In addition to this, he functions as a speaker, life coach, and is near completion of publishing his book, Get Back Up, The First Step Towards Your Destiny. Ultimately, Cliff Roy has been and will always be one of us, a veteran. Cliff? Well, first and foremost, it's an honor to be here before all of you today. Um, I didn't have a written speech, so I hope I don't disappoint anybody. <laughs> I have a tendency to speak from the heart. Um, I can be pretty animated sometimes, so I hope you don't frighten very easily either. Um, of course, nobody wants to sit here bored, right? <laughs> Being a veteran. I, I want to start off by, by first of all telling you a, a, an experience I had. Today means a lot more to me than I can actually vocalize at the time when I was asked to speak here. But before I say that, let me say first and foremost, thanks to Dr. Jesse Broussard, um, who works in the Veterans Upward Bound Program as my aunt, but I didn't take that lightly. She, she's always been tough on me. She's always pushed me and pushed me and pushed me because we come from a, come from a tough family. 
Um, so allowing me to speak here wasn't just a matter of, hey, it's my nephew, it was a matter of scrutiny and making sure I had my act together first. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a big thing for me, to be able to stand before you. And see. The experience I want to talk about was the first time I, I attended a roll call service. I don't know if any of you ever been to one, I'm sure most of you have. It's probably the most chilling thing I ever experienced in my entire life. And the, the weird thing about it was that it didn't happen because of somebody died in combat overseas. We had two soldiers who lived in El Paso and decided to take a trip across the border to visit their families and friends and have a good old time. And unfortunately, one of them didn't make it back. Uh, one did with injury and told us what happened. And as things would happen, we had a roll call service. And I remember them sitting there and placing the helmet, the rifle, the dog tags, and the boots in front of us. And we sat down beside this church and it was quiet, kind of like this place right now. And they began to call out names of each person that we could recognize, and we all responded with, here, Sergeant. And in doing so, after so many names were called, they called out the names of those that were missing. And I'll never forget the feeling in my heart, knowing that one of my comrades had fallen by the wayside. They were not there anymore. They would never answer the call. And it was something I promised myself I'd never forget, and I always remind each and every person around me of what it's like to miss out on the rest of your life and be encompassed by silence. Today I think we'll experience that, but before we get to that part, there's some things I want to do to encourage each and every one of you. Um, do y'all mind if I come from behind this, right? Yeah. I don't want to frighten anybody, right? So, um, who's in the Marines? Er, er. All right. Navy. Air Force. Army. Oh, All right, there we go. That's me, I'm a combat engineer 12 problem. Uh, went in the Army at 17 years old, had no idea what I was doing. All I knew is that they said I was an engineer, I wanted to be an architect, and those of you that are in the Army probably laugh at me internally right now because guess what? You do anything but build inside of the Army as a combat engineer, so we blew everything up. <laughs> Nevertheless, life threw me some curveballs I didn't expect. I fell in love with the Army. It was like this unforeseen relationship you get into and you don't expect to fall in love, but you do. And I started loving the Army. And it was real fun. Got to do a lot of things, got to go different places, meet different people. Got outside of the culture of Louisiana. Never forget the one time I brought Boudin back to Texas, right? You ever done that before? It's a weird experience. You could have been a millionaire if you did it. And the guys teased me because I was in a day room. Y'all know what the day room is, right? Place with the pool table, the TV, you just hang out there. And I was heating up Boudin in the microwave. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> heating up in the microwave, and the aroma that comes from the Boudin just filled the room. And Everyone that was like, what is that you're eating? It smells great. And of course you say booty and it doesn't register with the average mindset. So they're like, booty, what? So what I did is I took a link of booty and I cut it into several pieces and I distributed, I distributed it out to each person. And that was probably the first time I became a salesperson. I sold each link for $5. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was a good experience being in the military. You know, Nevertheless, I learned some valuable lessons in the Army, right? That would teach me how to handle some things in life. How many of you that life does not fight fair? You realize that yet? Nothing's handed to you. You have to fight tooth and nail every step of the way. But one of the most valuable lessons I learned was how to handle an ambush. Has life ambushed anybody yet? <laughs> Unexpected loss situations, like, yeah, this is my plan, and your plan doesn't work off. Y'all mind if I pull Mike Tyson and said, everyone has a plan to get punched in the mouth? You know, <laughs> so I had a plan, and then all of a sudden, life says, I don't think so. But good thing Uncle Sam taught me how to handle an ambush. What I'm saying is this sometimes things happen in your life, and the ambush is designed to separate you from your destiny. Does that make sense to anyone yet? Separate you from your destiny, separate you from everything that you love and that you care for. And of course, unfortunately, sometimes you get ambushed multiple times. One thing about an ambush, guys, is that doesn't what you're, no matter where you're headed in life, when the ambush happens, one thing you better learn is not to turn back. Don't turn back is number one. Two, do not stop. Three is push forward all the way through. Now, of course, as you're going through life, you learn that getting your education is not very easy sometimes. You know, you got the kids, you got the, the family, you have the job, you have all these other things that happen, unexpected losses, situations, natural disasters. All these things happen, they try to prevent you, and you know what happens to us, right? These things called PTSD, anxiety, depression, all those things hinder us and they hold us back. That emotional stuff we can't really express too well to most people. 
But nevertheless, my comfort's always been fine knowing that once I got through the ambush, my comrades were on the other side. Now, you're gonna take casualties, it's gonna be losses, it's gonna be injuries, it's gonna be wounds, but what you have to do is you have to not throw in the towel, guys. Today I came specifically to remind you not to throw in the towel, not to quit despite what you're facing, what you're going through. Do not let life's challenges set you back and hold you back. After all, you made it through the military, right? Some of you made it through some tough situations you never expected to find yourself in, but to get back on this side of life and be a casualty now, it's not. What I love is to be in a room with people that are all brothers and sisters and all. I love it, man. When I'm around somebody and they say I'm a veteran, when I see a veteran hat, it just kind of excites me. I was at the hospital the other day and I, I was in the room and I walked in with this guy. And I get in there and I see him on the bed and he's kind of half asleep. He gets in his chair and I look over there and I see a hat by the window. I said, Vietnam veteran. Man, I got excited. And I started talking. Because you know what we do when we're veterans, right? We just can't be quiet. Make a lot of noise. And somebody has to say, shh, don't keep it down. But we don't know how to keep it down, man. We've been down long enough. You know, it's hard being quiet in a foxhole, right? Any of y'all been in a foxhole before? Any of y'all been in a bunker before? It's kind of hard being quiet. We don't like being quiet. That's the hardest part, right? Doing guard duty at night when everybody's sleeping. And you're, you're, you're with your buddy and your whisper starts to turn into laughter and everybody's just supposed to be guarding things. Everything within the limits you're supposed to know, which you're supposed to properly relieve. Y'all remember that, right? <laughs> cool deal. So, um, the point is to push through everything. Don't stop and don't let anything separate you from what you're destined to do. I don't care how tough it is. Push through. Do not let life's expectations, disappointments, and losses keep you from reaching. That's the first one. So the next one is, I like to tell a story. Because sometimes I think we let our pains and our setbacks confuse us. Any of y'all been asking why things happen to you? Like no matter what, it's like why did why did why did so and so pass away? Why did why did divorce happen? Why did my, my funding not go through? Why, 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 why? And you know that sometimes we can be we can experience paralysis by analysis, right? Analyzing our lives too much, thinking too much sometimes. So I want to tell you a story. Anybody familiar with the continent of Africa? Anybody familiar with it? I think it's on the map somewhere, right? Y'all yeah. saw Black Panther, so y'all know where Africa is now. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, there's this African king, right? And this African king, um, he has a very optimistic friend. Very, very optimistic. Any of y'all have an optimistic friend? Someone that no matter what happens, they're always telling you, it's going to be all right. At some point, you kind of get discouraged with that person. You don't want to hear it, right? Like, like shut up. No, it's not going to write. I'm hurting right now. I'm in pain. Well, he had his optimistic friend, and no matter what happened, doesn't matter if the village was plundered, doesn't matter if the, the cattle were sick, the people were in anguish, his friend's response was, this is good. <laughs> so, I need everybody in your best African accent to say, this is good on the count of three. Y'all follow me? One, two, three. This is good. Oh, I love the sound of that. <laughs> this is good. So here it is. He decides what I'm going to do is I'm going to go hunting one day. And he hunts a rhinoceros. So he goes out there with his buddy and his friend's purpose on the hunt was to hand him the rifle. And y'all had a battle buddy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, I know what I'm talking about, right? So he gets out there and he sees the rhinoceros and says, There she is, the beautiful rhinoceros. Hand me my rifle. He hands the rifle. There she goes. Pow! He shoots the gun. Gun backfire, blows his thumb off. Thumb hits the ground, his friend runs over to the thumb. This is good. <laughs> so, of course, the African king is frustrated and infuriated by it. I cannot believe you think this is good. Throw him in prison. So he throws him in prison, locked up. Now, the second point in this is there are some people that have tried to tell us things would be all right that we've gotten in prison in our minds. We won't talk to them anymore. We shut them out because it would it meant well, but it just kind of hurt at the time, right? I'm in pain. I want to hurt. Y'all you you felt like you wanted to hurt before? That's what we do, right? We want to hurt sometimes, especially us veterans. You know, we served our country. We've given our all, and I'm hurting right now. Let me hurt. So he threw him in prison, and time goes on, and you know, when you get hurt, you just don't do some things like you used to. And that is joyful. So the king would just sit down and eat. He got him a new friend, right? Guess what his new friend would say? He would say absolutely nothing because he wasn't trying to go to jail. <laughs> he was not trying to go to jail. So the king, after talking to his counselor, decides it's in his best interest to go hunting again. Take on life's challenges. So he says, okay, I'll take your advice and the consideration and I'll go. So he goes out with his new best friend. So he finally gets out there and he says, okay, I'm going to try this again, that's the rhinoceros. 
Hand me my rifle, please. Now, he doesn't have a crowd this time because, you know, when we start to get back in the swing of things, we don't like an audience, right? We don't want to be embarrassed and shamed. So it's only those two. So he hands him his rifle and he goes to shoot and cannibals come out of the woodlands. Wow, what luck. They captured the king and his friend. Time to a pole. And there he is, captured. So the king is saying that, cannot believe this. I lost my tummy, now I'm about to be eaten alive by savages. Wow, with love, right? You ever felt like that? Set back, get it together, try it again, set back again, and just roll over and die. Get through this, right? So here it is. Now, I don't know if y'all know any of y'all familiar with cannibals? Cannibals are pretty, pretty neat people. Y'all yeah, think they just eat people all the time. It's on occasion, you know what they can. So what it does is the cannibals are finicky eaters, so they have a food inspector. Make sure you know that, right? The food inspector is responsible for cleaning and purifying the people and getting the, the whole village involved. So he do this little food company. So what he does is he shaves the, the guy down. This is the helper. He does it when the king is last. Shaves him down, throws boiling hot water on him, and he says, village, we're going to count the digits on the person. Make sure he is complete. So what he does, he counts the digits. When he gets to 10, the entire village says, 10 toes. So I don't know if you came here today planning to interact, but I'm a kind of an interactive speaker. So I need you to be the village. Y'all okay with that? So when it gets to the 10, whatever we're counting, I need you to all with great enthusiasm say, 10 toes, okay? You're ready. So he says, village, are you ready? Ready. Okay, let's try this again. Village, are you ready? Yes. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten toes. Ten toes. Yes, 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 yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten fingers. Ten fingers. Yes, let's eat. So they take him and they roast him and unfortunately they eat the guy. The king's standing there. They're not going to eat them all on the same day. So like three days goes by, the purification process happens, and the food inspector comes out. Village, are you ready? Hey. Yes, it's the king. They shave him. They throw the ball of hot water on him. Says, "Okay, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten toes. Ten toes. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, oh, nine. <laughs> There's only nine fingers. He's not complete. Cut him. Let him go. We cannot eat something that's not complete. So they cut the king loose, and he's standing there naked. And they're like, "What you ready for? Go." So the king takes off running, naked, nude, running home. Now, I don't know if you've ever been running naked before, but you think about a lot of things, right? <laughs> Hopefully you haven't. <laughs> but he's running and he's thinking about, oh my goodness, my friend that had been prison for five years unjustly, I must run. So he runs straight to the prison. They've been looking for the king all this time. Runs straight to the prison and the guards are like, oh my goodness, your honey's your nude. So they cover him up and says, take me to my friend. So he takes him to his friend. And his friend is standing in the prison cell with this big old smile that he always has. Five years later, mind you, the king says, Oh, my friend, I'm so sorry. I wrongfully imprisoned you for nothing. You told me this was good. And his friend says, This is a bad thing I've imprisoned you. His friend says, This is good. <laughs> so he's like, Oh my God, what an idiot. How is it good? Explain to me how is it good that I've imprisoned you all this time unjustly. And this is good. His friend simply looks at him and says, Where are your hands? If I would not have been in prison, I would have been. <laughs> so, the thing about this story is, a lot of times, when you're trying to pursue the greatest things in life, things happen. Setbacks happen. Loss happens. And for some reason, within the midst of the pain, we can't see what life is trying to teach us. We're not patient enough to wait for life's opportunities to educate us on why we went through what we went through. Now, Veterans that are sitting, I tell you this, you've probably been through a lot of things, some of which you don't understand. There's going to be a lot of challenges. That's just the way life is. I've learned not to be paralyzed thinking about the why, but just waiting for the lesson to teach me. And continue pursuing your mission. Don't imprison those that are trying to help you. Don't reject those that are trying to get you to the next level. Always stay in tune with your destiny. Do not cut back from your destiny, guys. Don't quit. So what I've learned to do is I've learned to take every bit of my pain in life and turn it into something important and something special. I refuse to be set back. Man, I've tried to do a lot of things in life. But most importantly, when I think that one thing I learned to do is not quit. So on your journey, what I recommend you do today is not quit. When life implements its roll call and your destiny calls for you, you have to answer. Do not return silence with your destiny. There's some of our friends and our peers that can't answer. 
There's no reason that you shouldn't answer. So when your name is called, when life says, hey, it's your turn. Charles, Chris, Brian, Matthew, Susan, Tina, whatever their name is, answer your destiny. After all, you soldiers. And if you need some help, I'm always an available battle buddy. Y'all know what that is. Cover me while I move. Got you covered. That's all I have for you guys. I'm going to end it on that note. Remind you that if life kicks you down, get back up. Kicks you down, get back up again. Leave no one behind. Every veteran you meet, encourage them and remind them the mission's not over. <laughs> it's not over until everybody gets home. All right, guys? And that's what I have for you. Hope that wasn't too boring. <laughs> Today we're joined in a moment of silence with others across the nation who will pause to remember the fallen. Let us now observe a brief moment of silence before the reading of the names begin. Since 1775, nearly 2.5 million U.S. citizens have been killed or wounded in defense of our nation. All living veterans hold the death of their comrades in a special place inside them, which is forever vivid in their hearts and minds. While today remembers all veterans, let us take this time to remember those who paid the ultimate sacrifice by calling out their names and remembering the life that could have been. The following names are Louisiana casualties of Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom, as well as names submitted by the community. Sergeant Julia V. Atkins, U.S. Army. Private First Class Lionel Aero, U.S. Army. Staff Sergeant Christopher J. Babin, U.S. National Guard. Sergeant Major Barbara Lee Banks, U.S. Army. Lance Corporal Matthew Ron Barnes, U.S. Marine. First Lieutenant Christopher W. Barnett, U.S. Army National Guard. Command Sergeant Major Edward C. Bornhill, U.S. Army Reserve. Private First Class Brian R. Bates, Jr., U.S. Army. Private First Class Wilfred D. Bellard, U.S. Army. Sergeant Bradley J. Bergeron, U.S. Army National Guard. First Sergeant Michael J. Bordelon, U.S. Army. Sergeant Joseph A. Bovia, U.S. Marine. Lance Corporal John Eric Bowman, U.S. Marine. Lance Corporal Billy D. Brixley, Jr., U.S. Marine. Technical Sergeant Larry D. Bunn, U.S. Air Force. Private First Class David Paul Burridge, U.S. Marine. Private Second Class Joshua C. Burroughs, U.S. Army. <laughs> Corporal Marcus A. Kane, U.S. Army. <clears throat> Sergeant.
Specialist Curtis A. Carter, U.S. Army. Corporal Willie P. Celestine, Jr., U.S. Marine Corps. Lance Corporal Donald E. Champlin, U.S. Marine Corps. Specialist Jonathan Brian Chisholm, U.S. Army. Sergeant First Class, Kirk J. Como, U.S. National Guard. Specialist Michael S. Cope, Jr., U.S. Army. Lance Corporal Derek J. Cothern, U.S. Marine Corps. Corporal William J. Crouch, U.S. Army. Major Ronald W. Culver, Jr., U.S. Army National Guard. Private First Class, Tory J. Dantzler, U.S. Army. Staff Sergeant Craig Davis, U.S. Army. Petty Officer Third Class, Lee Hamilton Deal, U.S. Navy. Technical Sergeant Daniel L. Duville, U.S. Air Force. Specialist Christopher R. Drake, U.S. Army National Guard. First Lieutenant Brandon R. Jonet, U.S. Marine Corps. Lieutenant Junior Grade Terry James Duga, U.S. Navy. Corporal Joseph C. Dumas, Junior, U.S. Army. Milton DuPont, Sr., U.S. Air Force. Specialist Stephen L. DuPont, U.S. Army. Staff Sergeant Danny Dupre, U.S. Marines. Specialist Robert R. Dusson, <coughs> U.S. Army. Private First Class Chase A. Edwards, U.S. Marines. Sergeant L. S. Evans II, United States Army National Guard. Sergeant Huey P. L. Fassenberg, United States Army National Guard. Sergeant Robert V. Fallen, <coughs> United States Army National Guard. Chief Petty Officer Ja J. Futon, U.S. Navy. Staff Sergeant Jared S. Fontenot, U.S. Army. Corporal David M. Ferez, U.S. Army. Private First Class Benny S. Franklin, U.S. Army. Private First Class Vincent S. Fesson, Fasino, U.S. Marines. Sergeant Armed L. Fricky, U.S. Army National Guard. Staff Sergeant Michael J. Gable, U.S. Army. Staff Sergeant Michael J. Garcia, U.S. Army. S Sergeant J. R. Gotro, U.S. Army. Sergeant Terrell W. Gilmore, U.S. Army National Guard. Sergeant Lee M. Goble, U.S. Army National Guard. Private Second Class Mark W. Grant, U.S. Army. Lance Corporal Christopher O. Grant, U.S. Marine. Sergeant Michael J. Guillory, U.S. Marine. Sergeant First Class Peter J. Hahn, U.S. Army National Guard. Lance Corporal John Edward Hale, U.S. Marine. Specialist William S. Hayes III, U.S. Army. Private First Class Bryant J. Haynes, U.S. Army National Guard. Specialist Jeremy M. Hines, U.S. Army. Sergeant Paul M. Hexel, U.S. Army National Guard. Chief Warrant Officer Two, Brian J. Henderson, U.S. Army. Petty Officer First Class, Larry J. Hendricks, U.S. Navy. 
Sergeant First Class John Henning, U.S. Army National Guard. Staff Sergeant Quadi S. Hudgens, U.S. Army. Corporal Robert Horn, U.S. Marine. Lance Corporal Dakota R. Hughes, U.S. Marine. <coughs> Captain Aaron D. East, U.S. Army. Captain Gussie M. Jones, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Jonas B. Kelsall, U.S. Navy. Specialist Levi B. Kinchin, U.S. Army. Senior Airman Julian Scholten, U.S. Air Force. Staff Sergeant James Dixon, U.S. Air Force. Sergeant Jeffrey L. Kirk, U.S. Marines. Sergeant Floyd G. Knighton, Jr., U.S. National Guard. Sergeant Renee Knox, Jr., United States Army. Specialist James P. Lambert, U.S. Army. Staff Sergeant Brian A. Lewis, United States Army. Specialist James, Specialist Charles E. Leonard, Jr., United States Army. Sergeant Joshua B. Madden, United States Army. Staff Sergeant William F. Manuel, United States Army National Guard. Staff Sergeant Toby W. Mallon, U.S. Army. Lance Corporal Ryan S. McCurdy, U.S. Marines. Airman Omar J. McKnight, United States Air Force. Lance Corporal Justin D. McLeese, United States Marine. Staff Sergeant Jacob G. McMillan, U.S. Army. Corporal Justin R. Nixon, U.S. Army. Sergeant First Class Robert J. Robinson, U.S. Army. Sergeant Warren A. Murphy, United States National Guard. Sergeant David Joseph Murray, United States National Guard. Sergeant Craig L. Nelson, United States National Guard. Staff Sergeant Nicholas J. Olivier, U.S. Army National Guard. Private First Class Kristen E. Parker, U.S. Army National Guard. Sergeant Willard Todd Partridge, U.S. Army. Private First Class Charles C.C. Persing, U.S. Army. Corporal Chad W. Powell, U.S. Marine. Specialist Matthew C. Powell, U.S. Army. <coughs> 